Hi everyone, today we're going to do some oxyacetylene welding. I'm going to show you how to set up your regulator tanks, how to safely use your torch, and how to do some basic fusion welding with some flat bar. This is just regular steel. So first off, setting up your tanks, we've got two here. We have an oxygen tank and we have an acetylene tank. I have a little rhyme that I follow for all of these steps. It's always gonna be A before O, acetylene before oxygen, or up you go. Don't ask me why, but it's gonna help you remember every single step. So before I get started setting up my tanks, I need to make sure that my torch and everything has been set up correctly. We need to make sure that the tip, there's a tiny little hole here. We need to make sure that the tip is clean, it's hard to see. You need to make sure the tip is clean. If you do need to clean it, and you can tell once you actually start welding, you can use a tip cleaner. Tip cleaners look something like this. You need to pick the right size for the one that fits in that hole. First, we're gonna do the acetylene first. We're gonna open up the main valve here half a turn. So if this is my start, I want it to get to here. And I've drawn a little line here to help remember. Half a turn. Now the last person who used this did not purge the valves, but usually when you get to it, let me just purge that valve for a second. Release the pressure on my regulator. There we go. This is basically how much fuel is left in the cylinder, and this is how much pressure will be coming through. So in order for me to increase pressure that is going to be coming out of my torch, I'm gonna to have to adjust the regulator. I'm gonna open up the knob on my torch handle for the acetylene or the fuel. Just open it up, don't worry about how big it is yet. And I'm going to adjust the regulator here. I'm going in the plus, you can see plus or minus. I'm going plus, and I'm gonna increase it to about six PSI. Here we go, we're at three, four, five, six. If you look very closely there, and you can hear the acetylene actually coming out. Go ahead and turn off your knob. This one is set and ready to go. Next, we have our oxygen tank. We need to adjust this to we have between, I'm gonna say five and 10 PSI coming out of this. We're gonna open this valve all the way until it stops. We're gonna take our torch handle, open up the oxygen, Adjust the regulator until we have between eight and 10 PSI. It's hard to see the numbers, but we just need the, that little valve needle to show it just a little bit right there. That's good. Turn off your torch valve. So if you look closely, you can see that the needle on the left is just open a little bit. And down on the acetylene, it's around six. Let's zoom in there a little bit. You can see that the PSI is just about six. If you look on the left dial, you can see that there's a red zone. Do not push acetylene past 15 PSI. Next, you need to have some sort of eye protection. We're gonna be using a number nine screen here. This allows it to protect your eyes and your face from the heat, mostly your eyes so that your eyes don't hurt while welding. Welding with just bare eyes is gonna hurt for a while. You need to have a set of gloves ready. We're using leather gloves here to protect from burns. And I've got pliers here to pick up hot material after we've been welding. If you pick up hot material with bare hands, you're gonna get all blistery. I'm gonna set up my two pieces of flat bar here with a slight gap in between. And I'm using fire brick to prevent my table from getting hot and fire bricks will not explode when heated or anything. So now that I have my metal set up. I have my torch all ready to go. All I have to do is open my acetylene valve just a little bit or fuel valve. This one's using acetylene. Open it up just enough that you can feel it on your hands or you can put it up on your ear and actually listen. I'm wearing these wicked glasses. Just enough to feel it. Take your striker, hold it on a slight angle beside here and you get a nice sooty flame. 
All that black stuff is carbon. We want to get rid of that or it makes a big mess. I'm going to open up my acetylene valve until that black smoke goes away and I have a nice feathered flame. Delicious. If you're doing thinner material, you don't need as hot of a flame. In this case, we're doing eighth inch flat bar. So I'm going to open that up until I get a nice roar. I don't have a special number for this. Beautiful. Next, we're going to open up our oxygen and add some oxygen to this mix. Watch carefully what happens to the flame. Now, if you look at it, it looks like we have two different cones here. We've got a very bright one, and we have a longer one here. Don't try, to get don't try to touch it, but you can get pretty close without feeling any heat. I'm not going to purposely do that, though. All right, I'm going to adjust some more oxygen until that one cone gets nice and tiny. So here's just, I set the exposure on the camera down a little bit so you can see the two different cones. When you first have just acetylene, you've got that. Add your oxygen, and you're going to see two different color flames essentially coming out. We've got a short bright one and a long one there. I'm going to add more oxygen until I have a very nice little cone that's maybe less than a centimeter long. All right, let's do some welding. So I have my flat bar set up with a very slight gap in between. I want to have a little bit of a gap to allow the metal to penetrate when it gets welded together. I'm going to start by tacking both ends and then I'm going to do a fusion weld. To tack first, I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to hold my torch on about a 45 degree angle and kind of zigzag between the two pieces while concentrating on one area. If this is taking too long, you could increase the pressure and get more heat. What we're looking for is both pieces of metal to basically turn molten. You'll see it start to get shiny on both sides and then those two shiny parts will join together into one puddle. Back and forth, let them join, there we go. There we have now a little puddle. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I've dropped the exposure on the camera so you can get a better look at what's going on here. So I'm holding my torch on about a 45 degree angle, zigzagging back and forth between the two pieces. I'll hold the torch on the other side so you can see better. And I wanna get a nice little puddle going. Back and forth between the two. And I'm just hovering above the metal. I don't want the torch to actually touch the metal. Here comes my puddle. Should join soon. The two sides are getting molten. And I want those two little puddles there to become one. Wait for that moment. You can do little circles or zigzags. There it is. You see that? Now we have a nice little join. Now that I got my two sides tacked, I'm gonna practice laying a fusion weld, which is basically taking that puddle and pushing it down the length of my joint here. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, it doesn't matter. You gotta find a way that works for you. I'm gonna go in this direction and push my puddle that way. So I'm gonna heat it up, get that puddle molten again. I'm holding my torch on about a 45 degree angle. Get that thing heated up, and then I'm going to push the puddle. If I stay in one place for too long, once my puddle's going, I, risk, I run the risk of actually burning through and burninating my metal. There we go. Keep your heat even on both parts of your metal. There we go. It's getting shiny. I'm waiting for that puddle to join. Here it is. I'm slowly going to zigzag and push forward with my torch. Now this flame is extremely hot. You're probably looking at over 3,000 degrees. Keep pushing that puddle all the way down the length of your metal. I do zigzags, but you could also do circle movements. I think that's personal preference. You can see that small molten puddle moving towards the end. You 
You don't have to do giant circles. This is fairly thin material. You just want to work it down to the end. Don't go faster than your puddle. Slow down and let it go. Once you're finished your weld, turn off using the acetylene first, A, and then O. You can take this to a bucket of water or to the shop sink to cool it down. Be careful of the steam when this goes. Don't put your face directly above. Normally in welding, I'm not gonna cool it down in a sink. I'm gonna let it cool naturally. I don't want the weld to crack and become brittle. But when we're just practicing, I think it's okay. Once it's dried off, you can shine it up with a brush. And we can take a closer look at our fusion weld. It's nice and flat. I think this looks pretty good. If you flip it over, When you flip it over, you can see that the metal did not really penetrate too much through the gap there. If you wanted to get more penetration, you can put a little bit more space in between your metal. 